Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today I'm going to show you how to debug in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Um, so let's take a look because it can be a little confusing as to which process you need to attach to to make sure um, you can debug. So the first thing we want to do when we're in a cloud host environment, or in this case, I'm in a Hyper-V, is we want to start um, Visual Studio running as administrator. So if I click on the Windows Start button and I type in Visual Studio, I can actually right click on Visual Studio application and say run as administrator. I've already done that. If I had it in the taskbar as well, I can right click on this taskbar application um, and then once it's popped open, uh, I can right click on administrator as well. Um, now that it's open, we can see that it's running as administrator because it's got this parentheses administrator at the top. The next thing we want to do is actually add a breakpoint inside the code. Um, so to find the code, we need to open the application explorer window. It should be on um, the left hand side there. If it's not, you can go up to the view menu and select application explorer. The next thing we need to do is just find a place to put um, code. So for instance, I'm just going to enter in sales table and it should show me all the results for the sales table. I'm just going to go down to tables and I can right click on the sales table table and say view code um, just so I see some code. Um, let's pretend that we wanted to put um, code uh, just in the first line here. Um, we'll wait till it's opened and then we can um, at a breakpoint. Now that the code is open, um, we see the uh, code in this editor window here. There's a couple different uh, ways I can add a breakpoint. Let's say I want to add it to this display method right here. I can come over to this gray bar on the left hand side and I can actually just click on that gray bar. And when I do, um, it will add a breakpoint and it'll show up as a red circle uh, when I do that. Now that I've added that breakpoint, um, we can see that red circle. I can actually disable it by clicking on it again or I can click on it a third time and add that breakpoint back. Um, another really useful shortcut is you can push the F9 key and that will also add a, a breakpoint. I can just click my cursor on whatever uh, row of code that I would like um, that breakpoint to uh, be inserted for and then I can um, hit the F9 key and it will add my red circle here. Um, so at this point I've added breakpoints to my code um, but in order for me to actually start the debugger and run the code and make sure that Visual Studio will stop and break and show me um, when that code's being run, I need to attach to the existing um, AOS service. The AOS service is the website that runs all of um, Dynamics 365. Um, so the way we attach to that service is we actually go up here, we click the debug menu and then select attach to process. Once we do that, it's gonna show us all processes that are running on this machine. Um, and then the first thing we need to do is check this checkbox to show processes from all users. If you don't do this, you may not see all the processes that we need to look at. Now, here is where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, the AOS service, uh, can run under two different processes. It can run under iisexpress.exe or it can run under w3wp.exe. So usually the quick ver way of handling this is to just look for um, either one of those and if you find it, go ahead and attach to the one you find. But we're gonna uh, talk about a little bit more in depth what these two services are and when they show up in either case. So if I look now for IIS Express, I actually am not gonna find IIS, IIS Express. That means that the AOS service is not running under that process. Instead, I can look for W3WP. 
Exe, and I can see that it's here. So this tells me that this is the process that um, D365 is running under, and that this is the process that I need to attach to if I want to debug. Occasionally, you might actually see multiple um, rows for W3WP. Um, these are called IIS, uh, IIS worker threads, and you can actually have multiple of them if you've got multiple instances of different websites running. In that case, it's actually um, the easiest way is to just uh, multi-select multiple of those W3WP um, EXEs and click attach. Um, it will only care about, or we only care about attaching to um, this worker thread that is running Dynamics 365, but it doesn't hurt to um, attach to all three. It may slow down just a little bit, but usually that's fine. Um, it's usually kind of a lot harder for us to find out which specific row to attach to than it is to just select all three and attach. We can see that there's an ID here for W3WP, um, and what we could do is we could right click on our taskbar and open the task manager and see what, um, uh, work, what process ID is running the um, Dynamics 365 service, and then that would tell us which W3WP service to attach to. But that, that's a little less common, so we'll just assume for now you can select the one or select multiple and then click attach. Once we've clicked attach, um, we will actually be ready to debug the code. You can run whatever process you want to on the front end website, um, whether that be opening a sales order form or invoicing a sales order. And then as long as you've added breakpoints in your code, um, you should be able to break um, when the system runs those lines of codes. You can then look at the variables and figure out what you need to do. Okay, so that's what we have for now. Um, I want to cover a little bit in detail on what these W3WP.exe services and the IIS Express service um, is as well. So I'm gonna cancel this for the moment and um, show you what that looks like. So if we go to Windows Start and I type in IIS, I'm actually gonna see the Internet Information Ser Services Manager. And if I open that, I'll get a window that looks like this. And this shows me all of the websites that are running on this machine. If I expand this node and I expand sites, I can see the AOS service um, website that is responsible for running all of Dynamics 365. I can see that it's started. If I look over in this manage website node, I can see that um, the start button is grayed out and that the stop button is enabled. I could stop it if I wanted to. I can also see that there's not a square stop icon on top of this website icon. What this tells me is it is indeed running in IIS, um, and so that is gonna show up as a W3WP service um, when we're trying to attach to the process in um, D365. Um, that said, it could be running as IIS Express. So I'm going to pause the video here for a second and I will start um, D365 running in IIS Express just so you can see what the differences are uh, in case you need to attach to that service. Okay, occasionally you will be in an environment where uh, Dynamics 365 is running under IIS Express. The way we can tell this is if we go down to the bottom right corner and we click on this little um, up arrow that says show hidden icons, we can look at the different processes that are running. And if I see this little icon right here and hover over it, this is IIS Express. If I right click on it, on it I can actually see all our different services including the AOS service. Um, if I'm running uh, this uh, service, then when I click on debug, attach to process, I'm going to need to find the IIS Express service and attach to this one. 
Um, so again, we could be attaching to IIS Express or W3WP, depending on which one Dynamics 365 is running on. Now, lastly, just in case you're curious, um, what happens if I don't want it to run in IIS Express and I'd rather force it to run in W3WP? I can actually make that happen um, by clicking on this up arrow, right clicking on IIS Express, and then selecting Exit. This will actually stop the IIS Express worker process that Visual Studio has spun up. Then I can go to the Windows Start type in IIS to open up the in Internet Information Services Manager. I can expand the different nodes and fa find my website. You'll notice if it had been running as IIS Express, the AOS service website will be stopped. I can kind of tell that because there's a um, black square stop icon on top of the icon. I can also go over to Manage Website and see that um, the start icon is enabled, meaning I could click on it, and the stop icon is disabled. So if I want to run W3WP, I need to start the website under this context. I can go ahead and click start. When I do that, um, usually you will get this error here. It says the World Wide Web Publishing Service is stopped. Websites cannot be started unless the World Wide Web Publishing Service is running. So basically when I'm running um, D365 under IIS Express, um, the system will actually stop um, this World Wide Web publishing service as well as the website. So I can fix that by first dismissing um, this dialog box, then going to Windows Start and typing in Services. Once I've typed in Services, I can see this application right here and select Services. Then I can scroll down or type in um, the grid until I see World Wide Web Publishing Services. We can see in the status that this service has been stopped. So I can click on Start up here or right click on um, the record itself and select Start. Now I've uh, started it, I can see that it's running. I can then minimize the services application. I can come back to the IIS Manager and click on the Start link. Now it allows me to start this AOS service uh, website. Finally, I can come back into Visual Studio. I can click on Debug, Attach to Process, and now when I look for IIS Express, I don't see it because we've um, stopped that process. But if I do search for W3WP, um, at first I won't find it because I need to make sure the show processes from all users is checked. Now that that's checked, I can search for W3WP. Um, and actually, I still don't find it. The reason why I don't find it is this uh, worker thread doesn't actually start until I try to start the website. So if I go back to um, IIS Manager, I can actually click on Browse to open up the link. This will start uh, this website in a browser. And as it spins up, that's when the W3WP um, process is actually created. So if I give that a moment um, and let that get created, um, I should be able to come back in here um, and even click refresh and then eventually see the uh, W3WP. And sure enough, I can see multiple here. Um, that can happen when I have um, potentially multiple browser windows or multiple sites running at the same time. Um, usually it's multiple sites. I can actually multi-select all of them as I discussed before and click attach and then I'm ready to debug. Thanks so much for watching.